Hi, it's David from Life with Parkinson's. If you're new here, welcome. For everybody else, thank you for coming back and watching another episode. This episode has been very difficult to pull together. It's been such a hard topic to talk about. I mean, when you have Parkinson's and your treatment options are eliminated, like, how do you talk about that? How do you express what you're going through and tell it to other people. It's it's been totally mind boggling and just just finding that right perspective to bring it across because I I don't want to blame anybody. I don't want to point fingers at companies, at government officials, at the medical staff and say, Oh, it's their fault, oh it's their fault, or it's their fault. It's more that I just want to bring awareness out there that this is happening to people, it's happening to me. And I know it's happening to thousands of other people across Canada. And that's what I just want to talk about today. So thank you for listening and giving me this opportunity to bring this very important issue to everyone. My last talk with my neurologist was two or three weeks ago. And he wanted to inform me that Kinmobi would no longer be distributing their sublingual strips in Canada, even though they're a Canadian company. And it's mostly because of lack of being prescribed. The main important thing here is that we bring awareness to this problem because it's a big one. Like Movapil runs out this month, at the end of the month, that's it. And those of us that were on it, as far as I know, we're supposed to go over to the Kinmobi. But now the Kinmobi program is being discontinued in September. For all those thousands of people, whoever was on it, there is no longer an alternative. And that's what my movement disorder specialist said to me. He's like, David, I'm really, really, really sorry, but there's nothing else I can do for you. For me, losing control of my treatment options makes me feel like I'm at the doctor's for the first time again. It's like almost like my diagnosis day has been resurrected, and I'm back there at May 28th, 2017, sitting in the medical clinic on a Sunday, and the doctor is going, you're having Parkinsonism symptoms. And it's like, oh my goodness, what is going on? This situation for me is exactly like that. Because now I'm sitting at the doctor's office, but the change is the doctor's like, I have no other options for you. I've been, I've been taking Movapo for just over a year. It's just been a life altering medication. Like from the first time I took it, back in the clinic and I could walk without having taken any Parkinson's medications for like 24 hours, I could get up and walk. One thing that's helped me the most, the best medication I've ever had was my injectable Movapo pens. Just on one small dose of Movapo just blew me away. And the video, I'm just going to post a card here. The video I'm talking about is Movapo, my Parkinson's rescue medication. I'll have the link to it at the end of the video, so you don't need to click away now. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Like new research, new technology, new medications all the time. For a country like Canada to be out of alternatives, really, just it just blows my mind. Like, there's new things being invented all, all the time, and we can't have them in Canada? One of the wealthiest countries in the Western world? I struggle with that. I struggle understanding that. So... <sighs> Being given that incredibly powerful dopamine agonist that got me out of my bad offs. Oh, yeah, and that's the main reason I, t I was prescribed the Movapo is because on my regular medication, my levodopa carbidopa, that basically, as far as I know, almost everyone with Parkinson's takes, I would get these peaks and valleys. So I would take my pills, my medication would come on, I'd get this big peak, and then it would start to wear off, and then i get this big valley. But I'd be up and down, up and down, up and down all day long. And <laughs> it was very exhausting. <laughs> we went to the doctor's office, and I broke down in tears. I'm like, you've got to give me something. Like, I'm just going bananas here. I'm on the couch. I'm off the couch. I'm on the couch. I'm off the couch. And I'm just getting worn down emotionally and mentally. And just... To have these options as a last resort, just to have these options as that rescue medication, it's like, I know it's, it's different, but in my mind, it's almost like taking away a puffer from someone who has asthma. 
I, I'm just trying to explain it so that people understand. Another way that it's impacted my life is my emotional stability and my mental stability. Because I just don't feel super safe driving anymore without a backup medication. Like I never got that snappy reaction off the carbidopa levodopa that other people did. Obviously, with medications, everyone is built a little differently. So it's going to impact people differently. Now when I'm driving, I always make sure I've got my rescue medication with me. So if I have a problem, I can pull over to the side of the road. There's lots of places to do that. Give myself a shot. 10, 15 minutes later, I'm good to drive again. Driving out of town or a long distance without that, ah, I don't know. Now I'm very nervous about it just because I don't have that safety net, that back, that backup net. I don't really want to cause any property damage or, heaven forbid, hurt myself or somebody else on the road because I don't have that option. So it's very important for me just to have some sort of backup when I'm out there driving. And it's not like I'm driving across Canada or anything. Yeah, I'm just going over to the supermarket. I'm still able to go out and work one day per week. So just to have all that taken away, it just leaves me at the point, it's like, huh, what can I do? And when you're off, like everything is off about you, your movement, your thinking, everything, your body, your, your, whole, your whole system is off. And the answer from the medical staff is nothing. There are no other treatment options available. Like my movement disorder specialist told me he has a waiting list of over 800 people. 800 people are waiting to see him. That's got to be a lot. I don't have no idea how many patients he processes in a week. That's got to be a couple of years worth. Even if he didn't get any new patients for the next couple of years, his schedule is probably still full. That just blows my mind. And apparently, this is not an isolated situation. It's like all over Canada. This is not just affecting me in West Bank, British Columbia. This is affecting the whole country. So what do I do now? Well, my latest strategy, since I'm getting my last shipment of Movapil here any day now, is to just ration it out piecemeal by piecemeal. And, you know, that may last another month or two, but at the end of that, it's going to be, well, I'm out. So I can only delay that inevitability for so long but then my treatment goes downhill a little bit. And, I, you know, I haven't been sleeping as well. But my main concern is for all the other people out there that are in the same situation as I am, what are they going to do? What treatment options are they going to get? Or are they just going to get tossed to the side in the medical system because it's unable to accommodate them? This affects everybody with, within the Parkinson's community in Canada because when we have our treatment options, reduced like you may not need this medication now but if you're not on it you may need it one day so we need options available and in an age of advanced technology and incredible medical research there's got to be more options available even if these two companies can't make this dopamine agonist go a go there's got to be something out there that can take the place of movapo and kinmobi I just ask you, if you're affected by this or indirectly affected by this, that you reach out to your MP, that you reach out to your MLA, because this needs to be done on a provincial and a national level. So I'm going to include all the instructions in the description below on how to reach out to your MLA and your MP. And please tell them how this personally affects you and how it affects others around you. If you're a caregiver, please reach out and tell them how it affects you and your person with Parkinson's. We need every voice heard. Something needs to be done to help the Parkinson's community in general in Canada. Reach out to your Parkinson's society in your province. Reach out to Parkinson's Canada. Together we can get all of our voices heard. That's something I say all the time. Let's take this journey together. Let's take this journey together, people with Parkinson's in Canada and caregivers alike and get our voices heard on this important matter. Thank you for taking the time to watch this episode and support this channel and people with Parkinson's. Let's take this journey together. Thank you. Have a good day. Goodbye.